Today on my agenda is the Catracel White Palette from Adapt Cosmetics. This is described as a multi-use palette and it retails for 68 US dollars, which is quite expensive for this, might I add. And this was purely an impulse purchase for me and I did not need this. I also want to speak about some problematic practices that I have come across in the cosmetics industry lately. I'm not just a makeup enthusiast and a makeup artist by qualification. First and foremost, I am a business professional. I am a CPA with a master's in finance and years of experience working in audit and compliance. So. Basically, I am qualified to speak about these things. If you want to hear about these issues, which might be your issues as well, keep on watching. I am going to start with these two cream highlighters. I'm going to put one on each cheek. So let's start with this one called Vorta. Since this is a cream, we're going to need a stiffer, denser brush, and this is a Refer 35. So it's showing up a little bit peachy pink, which I don't mind at all. It's a pretty color. Okay, I will say the texture is kind of Vaseline-y. And it's also sort of breaking apart my makeup over here, but it's okay. It's actually a little bit better than the serum highlighters from Unearthly Cosmetics. Those broke up my makeup a lot more than this one. I don't see any multi-chrome effect in this lighting, but I will check it out in daylight and other lighting conditions to make sure. Let's move on to the other cheek. I have spot cleaned my brush. This is the shade I'm going to use. Not gonna bother pronouncing this. Okay, this has a nice golden sheen, golden green, I would say. The first one reminds me of Spellbinding, and the second one reminds me of Mirage. Both of those from the Unearthly Low Light singles that they recently launched. These are pretty. Again, kind of glowy on the cheek. I don't mind them, they're okay. But I'm not the biggest fan of the kind of Vaseline texture. So, did I need this palette? I do not think I did. Like I mentioned, this was purely an impulse purchase. I will put the other ones on my eyes just to test them out, but before we start that, I want to speak on some things that I have here in my notebook. I wanted to cover everything in this video. This is going to be an important one because one of the reasons I started my YouTube channel is to educate people on some of the business issues in the industry and hopefully encourage consumers to make better decisions and hold people accountable because that way the whole industry can progress instead of certain people getting away with whatever they want. What do I mean by that? Let's start. First of all, have you noticed that prices of products have been increasing a lot? And by that, I don't mean one or two dollars. Certain brands I've noticed that once they come up with a launch and they see that it's successful, their next product is a lot more expensive because they think the customer will pay whatever they demand because they think they're the hot brand right now. Sometimes it seems like they're almost testing how much customers will pay before they stop. So that is something that bothers me. So far from the two highlighters that I've tested, their quality is nothing extraordinary. I would say, and I'm not sure why they chose to sell it at the price they did. Let's put the other two pans, I would say, on our face. I want to kind of 
just swipe across these and put them on my eyes. That's the way I like doing rainbow highlighters so that all of the colors can show in one place. That's my favorite way of doing this. I want to address one thing. I actually saw someone's comment somewhere that these individual shades in these two pens are not multi-chromes. But I am pleased to report that all of these individual stripes, they are multi-chromes and they do shift. But I'm not sure the small amount of powders in here can justify the price tag. Let's talk about a couple more things before we move on to the last pen because I am unable to concentrate on saying the things I need to say when I'm putting on makeup because makeup distracts me. Okay, let's talk about the high shipping costs that we've been seeing left, right and center with almost all indie brands. I've experienced shipping delays with many of my orders we know about the customs for international orders and something that we may not know about is that sometimes they include the shipping carrier's own fees. So it's important that you take a look at the breakdown of those fees, which sometimes companies don't provide. I actually placed an order from Sigma last time and the fees that they charged me were exorbitant. I had not experienced that with any other brand. And I am quite sure that this included some of the carrier's own fees, which can be upwards of 30 Canadian dollars. So I would not buy from those companies. It was either FedEx or DHL. I'm not sure which one. Another thing that the brands are choosing to charge customers is shipping insurance. So if your package is lost, they will not refund you unless you purchase shipping insurance. This happened to me recently when I contacted a certain brand about an order that I placed and they said, since you removed the shipping from your order, we can't help you. This is exactly why we ask international customers to purchase shipping insurance. Now, that's fine, but there used to be a time when the brands would themselves be responsible for this. It's not the customer's job to purchase insurance, in my opinion. This should be absorbed as a business expense for the business, not for the customer. I don't think this is a good direction that we're going in because this means that the businesses are basically taking all their costs and they're transferring those to the customers, which means that the customer is at a disadvantage and the companies, the businesses, they're at an advantage. And I don't approve of that. Okay, let's put the last one, the last powder on our eyes. I will do the same thing. I will just swipe it with my finger. Meanwhile, let's talk about the unethical profit margins that are currently prevailing in the cosmetics industry. When I was a child and I started my business education, one of the first things that they taught us was that 50% profit margin is ethical. Anything above that is widely considered unethical. Can you imagine how much profit margin these businesses are choosing to charge you? It's going to be more than 200% at the very minimum. That is what I believe. I can easily confirm that by going into the financial statements of some of these bigger companies that have public financial statements and calculating the margin, the profit margins and their markups on products. I can easily do a financial analysis and calculate those. And I am planning on doing that in some future videos. Look at this. This is definitely pretty. If you 
stay tuned and if you keep watching i will give you some alternatives to these ones because i definitely have some in my collection okay we're only seeing a few colors here you know what i'm gonna go into each of these colors individually and try this again with regards to profit margins that are unethical i'm going to say this most of these brands do their manufacturing in china or other places that have very low labor and manufacturing costs and they charge you way more than needed this is a suspicion i had that was confirmed by Glamlight's owner, Miss Giselle. If you're interested in this topic, you can go and follow her on Instagram. I see her on her stories where she explains to us how many brands in the industry are charging exorbitant prices and their costs are nowhere near that. So this is what I would recommend, to pay attention to these things as a consumer and call them out. I see consumers making excuses, multi-chromes are expensive, or this color is expensive to formulate, or things like that. Don't make those excuses, do some research, see if other companies in the market have something that is cheaper, better priced, better value. Do your research. If you keep giving in to FOMO, this will put you at a disadvantage, have these brands that are choosing to follow these unethical practices at an advantage over you. And me personally, I'm always with the consumer, never with the brand. I'm not a salesperson for any brand. We call them salesperson. In today's terminology, it's influencer. Anyone who has a code or is choosing to sell for the brand and gain any sort of financial benefit from it are salespeople, which is perfectly fine, but you should know that they are salespeople. They are going to make a commission off the profits that they sell you. They cannot be 100% unbiased. So I'm going to go shade by shade, the top one here. Now into the second orange shade here. This brush is not dense enough. Let me get another one. Going into the third shade, which is like a green to a yellow. The fourth shade, which is like a teal green to a purple. And the last shade, which is a blue, a cobalt blue to a purple. Now that's the full rainbow. Another thing that I wanted to talk about was poor customer service. So I see some brands that are charging very high prices for their products, and yet they refuse to provide good customer service to their customers because they think they are the brand of the moment and they don't need to do that because they're super popular even without that. I don't think this should be the case at all. I actually have the example of a certain very popular brand, not naming names, but it's one of the very popular ones right now. That's all I'm going to say. What happened was I ordered a collection from them and the eyeshadow palette came broken. I said to them, I sent pictures, I asked them, what can be done about this, you know? Mostly when I'm asking that question, I'm assessing what kind of solution are they willing to give me. And the better the solution, I feel like that is something that I want as a customer to make sure that I'm protected in case I order from this company. What they did was they said they will refund me $5 for the broken shade. Now, that is, 
I don't like that for one reason. I like to keep my palettes in pristine condition. If it comes with one shade spattered all over the rest and mixing into the other colors, the shade that was broken was a very dark green shade. So it basically ruined the whole palette. I Either I wanted them to send me a single so I can replace the one in my palette or, you know, make a bigger refund because that palette is just not pretty. What if I bought it for someone else to give as a gift? Us makeup lovers, we care about the visuals of things. I don't like getting ruined palettes. Whenever I open palettes that are ruined, it kind of kills my mood. And if I know that the company is going to tell me that they're not responsible, I don't, I don't like that. If they give me a full refund, I would have repurchased that palette. And I would have given the broken one away either or thrown it out, you know, because I don't, I don't like that. I don't like having broken shit in my collection. That's just me. And I think no customer should have to deal with that. It's not just me. I feel like anyone who orders from a brand because we pay high shipping costs we pay insurance and on top of that if a brand is like we can't do anything that's not fair that's not fair and that is not the practice that is currently prevailing in the rest of the industry so i've had this problem many times obviously because things break in shipment never have i ever had this problem that I did with that brand that they refunded me five dollars for like a 60 70 dollar palette what they do is either reship the palette or they refund me the full price so I can place an order again and get a new one I think those are fair there was another brand that refunded me like 50 percent of the value of a broken palette and I was like Eh, okay, like I can take that, but like still that's not the best thing, you know, because now I have a palette that's broken and seeping oil all over the thing. So like that's that's not something a customer should have to go through. I think businesses should be held to a higher standard because after all they're making tons of money off of you, off of the customers. Another thing that I want to mention is unethical marketing practices. So what do I mean by this? This means you will see brands creating unnecessary fear of missing out, FOMO. They'll be saying, this is limited edition, this will sell out, get, it, get your hands on it now or it's going to be gone forever, those kind of things. So before you give in to that, just think, do you need this? Or are you just thinking about the fact that you're going to see videos of every influencer having it and you're going to feel left out? Because this is something that happened to me. It, I'm not gonna lie, maybe it still happens. But if you're informed that this is a behavior that they're engaging in, maybe you can choose how you respond. Another issue that I came across is that the so-called influencers are not disclosing properly that they are being paid to promote a brand. I actually purchased an expensive eyeliner on the recommendation of a certain influencer on Instagram. And when I tried it, it was just like any other liner. But after a while, I followed her Instagram stories and I realized that this person is actually sort of an ambassador for the brand. They promote that brand's everything, basically. Everything that the brand puts out. So I wish that would have been disclosed to me before they recommended something like that. Because there is the appearance of conflict. So there is something that's an actual conflict and then there is the appearance of conflict in audit. Maybe that person really liked that liner, but in my mind, in the customer's mind, who's actually going to purchase it, they are going to question whether this person is invested because they are being paid by the brand. You know, it's not, it's not a big leap. Like I said, people with 
codes, affiliate codes, are salespeople. They are selling products for the brand, which is fine, but you should know about this. And you should know that what they recommend may be clouded by the fact that they will be paid for it. I do believe that receiving PR will also cloud some people's judgment. If you follow influencers like I do, you will see that they are incredibly grateful to be getting free product from companies, which is great for them. But can you expect them to be 100% unbiased toward that company? I have seen people not liking a certain product, but trying not to say something overly negative so as to not offend the brand. But I have also seen people that will be very honest with their opinions, no matter what they get in PR or if they even buy it themselves. That is not an issue for them. But still, it's something for the paying customer to be considering when you're watching all those videos where PR products are being promoted. The one thing that um, kind of irks me is the term gifted. A gift is something that you get from friends, family, and these businesses are in a business relationship with these influencers or salespeople. They're getting paid from that company. It's not, it's not a gift. It's not a gift. It's PR expense, public relationing, or it is a PR expense. Call it PR. I think that is a good name for what that is. Gifted is not the appropriate term at all. In audit, if I apply some of the principles of audit to the makeup industry, in audit, receiving gifts, if they're not of a nominal value, are considered to damage the auditor's objectivity. The consumer should just be aware of these things. It's okay to watch these people. It's okay to have them recommend stuff to you. But I would say pay attention to the application and the demonstration of the product rather than what the person is saying. I've seen people say that a certain product from their favorite brand is good, whereas you can clearly see in the demonstration that it's not performing well at all. Another common problem that I've actually come across is companies not paying attention to how their products are aging and they're merely concerned about pushing product out at the speed of light. We know who does that. What happens is their older products that are already with customers have aged badly and expired. And what they're hoping is that the customer would come back to them to repurchase those items. And I don't think that should be the case. This whole clean beauty trend where they're refusing to put preservatives in products and those products go bad very quickly, that is not something that should be happening. They should find a better solution. This is not going to work, at least with someone like me. I'm not going to buy something and throw it out within the period of expiry. This recently happened to me. I bought something from one of the very popular big brands and their mascara was expired within four months. Now, mascaras are supposed to be good for six months. Similarly, from the same brand, I got lip liners that are maybe, I don't know, a year old. And now the lead, I'm saying lead because I don't know what else to call it. The color stick inside of them, inside the outer packaging has shrunk. So it goes inside the tube and they're completely unusable. Now that should not be happening, should it? Another thing that I want to say is that certain small brands, in my opinion, will always remain small. That is because they are refusing to reinvest into their business. So maybe the owner takes the earnings and does not invest in the business again because they want a return, which is understandable because they have their own expenses. However, what happens is this forces them to shift all the costs such as shipping, such as insurance, such as inventory. For example, opening 
pre-orders for every launch that they do and constantly out of stock products because they cannot afford to invest in inventory. That is something that also is kind of irksome, especially when you see that brand being super popular everywhere and they're still saying, I'm just one person, give me time to ship things out, I can't afford to invest in inventory. And you're seeing their products everywhere. You're seeing them selling out of their launches immediately. And at one point you just wonder like, where is this gonna lead? Are they ever going to expand and, you know, improve their customer service or maybe improve their shipping or, you know? So my camera stopped recording for a bit there, but as I was saying, some brands will remain small and not reinvest in their business. What they do is they go out and they sponsor these influencer events and get merch made for influencers or catering these huge events. So what they're doing is they're spending on their networking and everything, but they're refusing to actually spend on the side of their business that actually is more important, which is, you know, investing in customer relationships rather than marketing relationships. Let's go back to the palette. Now, I like this palette. I'm not sure I'm particularly fond of these two cream ones. They have that Vaseline texture, like I mentioned, which I'm not the biggest fan of. The multi-chromes, they're nice, but they're hard to pick up with brushes because these little stripes, they're too small. And if you swipe with your finger, it's a bit big for that. So like I demonstrated, the whole finger thing doesn't work. It doesn't display all the colors. But if you want to do it with a brush, you need a stiffer brush. And even that will not make the black based multichrome is very opaque on your eyes. Like, look at this. This is very subtle, and these are supposed to be black based multichromes. So, I feel like you can do better if you have some Cleona shadows. The jeweled multichromes from their stained glass collection, you can get the same effect. And bonuses that you can actually go into the larger pan with your finger and build up the color on your eye instead of using a brush because I feel like the finger payoff is much better in terms of these black based multichromes. If you want a bigger pan for the black based multichromes, I would recommend the Bitter Lace Beauty highlighters. They have some black based larger 44 millimeter pans, which could be good for using a brush or even a finger if you want the finger application. For this iridescent highlighter, I actually got one from Sugar Drizzle. I don't remember what the price was. I will put it on the screen. And also Ensley Rain did also come up with um, iridescent highlighter that I have in my collection. I haven't played with it yet, but they're basically the same thing as this one. So. You're buying this in a palette in a fancy packaging, but with the single pan you can get the same effect and not have to spend this much, which I think is not really justified. So those are my thoughts on the palette. I will say I like the palette. I'm not opposed to it, but I just am not a fan of the price point. How I would have priced this is maximum $40. This is even smaller than their face trio palettes. So when it came, it was a very small box and I was wondering like, is that the face palette? Because I ordered a face palette along with this one. But the face palette was actually bigger than this. So those are all my thoughts. And hopefully in my commentary, you heard something that you may have felt as well with the beauty industry. I think it's important to keep highlighting these things so that the brands know that the consumer is very smart and very aware of all these issues and 
you know, it's not easy to take advantage of the customer. Marketing is basically a discipline in which a lot of manipulation is involved. I remember studying some persuasion techniques when I was doing my master's in finance and I was blown away. There's a lot more strategy going around than we as consumers may even consider. So it's important to be very aware and have that healthy skepticism that we actually have an audit. I think as a consumer, we should also be a little skeptical of everything that's thrown at us. Like there's so many launches going on and we should really think. My goal here is to educate anyone who may be watching and also to encourage myself to make better purchasing decisions. That is all I wanted to cover in this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye now.